Welcome to RMTC DHH's series on the high leverage practices for students with disabilities. In this video, we will be discussing the first high leverage practice from the CEC and Cedar Center's publication, High Leverage Practices in Special Education. The first high leverage practice in the category of collaboration, HLP1, states, collaborate with professionals to increase student success. What is collaboration? Most people would answer working together. But is that all collaboration is? The HLPs state that collaboration is more about how individuals share their work through voluntariness, each individual acting of their own will without coercion, mutual goals, all having the same goal to see student success. Parity, all team members are equal partners. Share responsibility for critical decisions. It's not just one person making all the decisions and carrying the mental load. Joint accountability for student outcomes. It's not your student or my student, it's our student. and shared resources. Does collaboration really matter? The research behind this particular practice found that schools that had a collaborative culture outperformed other schools in similar locations. But how do you collaborate with others? Communication skills and trust are two key components of collaborating effectively. Did you know that the Florida Expanded Skills addresses communication skills? Standards 5.4a and b are all about teaching students to communicate appropriately with peers, family members, authority figures, and so on. If you are a teacher of the deaf and hard of hearing, you may have taught one of these standards to your students, teaching them how to effectively communicate with their peers, what's up, a map, versus their teachers. Hello, Ms. Taylor. Hold up, we're talking about collaboration. What do the expanded skills have to do with the HLPs and collaboration? Even though you may teach communication strategies via the expanded skills to your students, It's a good reminder that those same communication skills and strategies, plus the building of trust, can be used to collaborate with your colleagues. Speaking of trust, let's talk about the trust battery. Fried and Hansen discuss in their book, It Doesn't Have to Be Crazy at Work, that when you first meet someone, the trust battery is at about 50%. The more positive experiences you have with a person, the more charged the battery gets. Likewise, the more negative experiences you have, the more the battery is depleted. Too often, we swoop in like a superhero to save our students by coming to the other teachers with demands like, you need to do this for my student, which in turn depletes the trust battery. When we need to lose the cape and work together as a team, Using words that suggest instead of advice or demand, like, here are some suggestions that we can do to support our student. 
We teach our students about body language and appropriate communication strategies for peers and authority figures. We need to remember them too. Having effective communication strategies in your back pocket while conversing with colleagues can help build the trust battery. We will leave you with this point to ponder. How do you collaborate with the team to increase student success? Come to the TA Live discussion to learn how your colleagues address this question and share your thoughts to collaborate together. Remember to check out additional resources in the Live Binder. You can access the Live Binder on the RMTC DHHTA Live website or by going to the bit.ly bit slash rmtchlp. Can't make it to the discussion session? Or perhaps you're watching a recording of this at a later time. An idea to still work within your district is to visit the IRIS Center Interactive Alignment Tool. This tool identifies which IRIS resource provides information on the specific HLP. Where can you find information on the IRIS Center? If you guessed the Live Binder, you are right. Remember, you can find that at bit .ly slash rmtc hlp. To watch more videos about the HLPs, make sure you check out the TA Live archive in our video library. Until next time, we'll see you around. This presentation was funded by the Florida Department of Education's Bureau of Exceptional Student Education through federal assistance under the Individuals with Disabilities Act Part B funds. The information included does not reflect any specific endorsement by any parties involved.